So the cerebellum consists of a midline part right here, which we call vermis cerebelli, that goes all around like so. And this vermis is flanked to the sides by the two lobes, hemispherium cerebelli. The whole cerebellum has a superior surface, which is covered by the tentorium cerebelli, and an inferior surface right here, which rests in fossa cerebellaris of the skull, posterior cranial fossa. Then, um, as we move backwards in the midline, vermis cerebelli, we enter or we reach this uh, notch here, which you can see right there as incisura cerebelli posterior. And it continues as a deep valley that is placed between the two hemispheric lobes, which we call vallecula cerebelli, the little valley of the cerebellum. Then <clears throat> on the surfaces, we will have uh, these parallel grooves that will create uh, small little areas of the cerebellar surface, which we call folia cerebelli. So this is a sulcus of the cerebellum, and between two sulci, we have the folia of the cerebellum. There are certain deeper grooves, which we differentiate and will eventually separate the lobes of the cerebellum from each other. The first one is visible on the superior surface, and this is what we call fissura horizontalis. No, this is called the fissura prima. And then we will have the <clears throat> second uh, fissure is fistura horizontalis, the horizontal fissure. It's placed in the horizontal transverse plane. If we look at the cerebellum from behind, as you can see it here, fissura horizontalis. And the third one is on the anterior surface or anterior side. It's fissura, maybe visible better here, Postero lateralis, right there, as you can see it there. Now the fissures separate the lobes from each other, as I mentioned. So we have here fissura prima, separating the anterior lobe from the posterior lobe. And fissura prima will uh, be the anterior end of the posterior lobe, which will continue all throughout the cerebellum, all the way to fissura posterolateralis, which separates the posterior lobe from the flocculonodular lobe, which with its little component here called the flocculus. Also on this specimen, <clears throat> we will see this angle, which we call the ponto cerebellar angle, again mentioned in a previous video. Uh, in this angle, you can see this vascular structure, which is protruding practically from the fourth ventricle, and it is called the basket of Bogdalek. It's the external uh, part of the plexus choroideus of the fourth ventricle. Subdivisions of the vermis of the cerebellum in a sagittal section are as follows. First, of course, we're just gonna uh, have a short layout of the anatomical parts that are present here. So first, we're gonna see that we have here the brainstem anteriorly, then between the cerebellum and the brainstem, we will have this cavity. This is the cavity of the fourth ventricle, which is uh, bordered anteriorly by the floor of the fourth ventricle uh, for saromoidea on the brainstem. And then we have velum medullare superior, uh, and velum medullare inferior, which is partially missing here because it's a choroid tissue. Now, as far as the verma components go, we will have um, the velum medullare superior uh, attaches, or it is attached to the velum medullare superior, the first component, which we call the lingula of the vermis. Then this is followed by this little area, which we call lobulus centralis, then the topmost part, all the way to here, we have this big area, which is the culmen, followed closely by this smaller area, the declive. And one single folium of the vermis makes up the next section, which is the folium itself. Then as we turn downwards on the inferior surface, we go into the tuber, this is tuber, 
then as you can see very clearly delimited the next section is the pyramid or pyramids followed closely by the last bigger section which we call the uvula and the small little piece here I, I will try to separate it from the rest is going to be the nodulus uh, of the cerebellum so again i'm going to start from here lingula lobulus centralis then culmen declive folium tuber pyramis uvula and nodulus so the corresponding lobules on the hemispherium cerebelli to the vermal structures are as follows on the vermis we have anteriorly the lingula which doesn't have a lower correspondent then this, this is followed by the lobulus centralis with the small little component a la lobuli centralis on the side right here next next vermal structure is the culmen which goes all the way on top until fissura prima and it has its lobar correspondent called lobulus quadrangularis right here followed by on the vermis by the declive which is this section here with its corresponding lobulus simplex the small posterior folium on the vermis has a large lobar correspondent which we call lobulus semilunaris superior right here which stops at fissura horizontalis then we don't really see the vermal component because they are hidden in vallecula cerebelli so from here i'm going to continue only on the lobes so we're going to continue from lobulus semi, uh, from fissura horizontalis with this next next section which is lobulus semilunaris inferior followed by this area here which is lobulus biventer so from here to here we have the two subdivisions of lobulus biventer and the last component is this proeminent part of the lobes which we call tonsilla cerebelli the tonsils are located right behind the brain stem and they are practically right on top of foramen magnum of the skull eventually the last bit is the lateral part that belongs to the flocculonodular lobe which we call flocculus and it is connected to the nodulus in the middle to uh, via this um, white matter component which we call pedunculus flocculi